Real quick guys, at 70k subscribers, I'm giving away a full-on SK61 with Gator and Yellow Switches, so therefore make sure that you subscribe. In today's video guys, I'm going to show you the best NVIDIA control panel settings here for gaming in 2023 guys. I'm going to show you all the secrets which you can apply here in the NVIDIA control panel to get better gaming performance and less input delay in basically any games you guys are trying to play. I'm not only going to show you the best performance settings, but also how you can make all your games look super colorful and therefore gain a competitive advantage. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave a like and now let's get straight into this topic. So guys, I know for the best NVIDIA control panel settings, I'm going to show you exactly what you have to apply in order to get the best gaming performance here for 2023 and basically any esports title you guys are trying to play. And what we want to do, of course, in the first place is open up our NVIDIA control panel just simply over the search bar or here even on the bottom icons, guys. And then under 3D settings, we want to go to manage 3D settings. Once we're in here now, we have global settings and program settings. Program settings basically give you the option to individually like modify it for each and every single game, but we want to go for global since these are basically the best for any game you guys are trying to play and once we're under global settings guys we now have a ton of features here and what we want to do in the first place guys is take a look at image scaling and here i have to tell you guys it really depends on the title which you're trying to play and on your gpu a ton of nvidia gpus support this a ton not and image scaling as a quick summary is basically that you put your game on something like 1280 times 720 and ai is sort of going to scale it up still providing you a nice fps boost and good visuals even though you're only playing on 720p so therefore if your game supports it and your pc make sure to utilize this actually guys you just simply have to put it onto on and i figured out not going here for 50 percent but something like 60 is giving you this nice additional extra touch of having a sharper picture and still a very good performance boost but since not everyone has it i'm just gonna leave it here off right now ambient occlusion guys you're gonna put onto off antistrophic filtering to off as well this is basically how you have like edges in the distance if they're like sharper or a little bit wobbly but we don't really have to care about it too much since we're trying to focus on maximum fps guys antistrophic filtering to off as well anti-aliasing fxaa as well onto off and the only thing which you kind of leave on here in this whole entire anti-aliasing and antistrophic filter and the only thing which you really leave on here guys in this whole entire anti-aliasing and antistrophic section is gamma correction because this is basically lightning and you don't want your game to look like super bad so therefore leave this here on 100% guys then once we're going to take a look at background application maximum frame rate this is like an interesting feature let's just as an example that you use google chrome to listen to music in the background and you can actually put your google chrome on a limit of something like 20 fps 30 fps this is just like a nice little addition you know or maybe your discord in the background i don't really utilize it too much since it doesn't affect your performance too much but if you're more on a lower end system this actually can make a difference guys for CUDA gpus you're gonna actually make sure to put this here selected on your nvidia geforce and then especially your graphics card yeah for me it's right now rtx for d70 ti so i'm going to select that just simply leave it on that then for dsr factors guys you're gonna leave it on to off and now once we step over to low latency mode this is super important tons of monitors support this guys we have something like on and ultra and pro players are still really debating about this which one is better and personally from all the monitors which are already reviewed here on my channel guys i gotta say ultra works the best and really gives it the least amount of input delay and basically any games you guys are trying to play it doesn't matter if it's valorant csgo fortnite even minecraft i have to say guys ultra is simply the best mode so therefore make sure this one is checked 100 percent then for maximum frame rate i really wouldn't recommend you to go on it unless you have super unstable fps let me explain this real quick but just say that your average fps is anything between 144 and 180 simply cap it actually to something like 160 so you still have a little bit additional fps for less input delay so that your gpu doesn't always like fluctuate between 144 and 180 because let's just say as an example that there are these rare moments where gpu can actually hit more even than 180 fps let's just say like 200 you know if you look into the sky or something like that you're just gonna have additional thermal throttling which means that your gpu is gonna work super hard to produce these 200 fps starting to slowly maybe overheat and let's just say that you play for multiple hours this can actually provide you more unstable fps so therefore if you have unstable fps make sure to cap it something like 10 to 20 fps above what you get then for multi-frame sampled aa guys you're gonna leave it on to off there's also just like another rendering ai providing us with a sharper picture but it doesn't really do too much guys open gl gdi compatibility you can leave on auto open gl rendering gpu you're gonna leave on auto select this one you can theoretically also put on your gpu this only makes a difference if you have like integrated graphics you know some ryzen's have like i don't know vega graphics or some intel processors have like these intel hd graphics that makes sense guys but right now you're on my pc with a single gpu just leave it on auto you're gonna be fine power management mode guys you're gonna put to prefer maximum performance we want to get maximum gpu utility 100 percent guys your gpu utility should be as high as possible in order to counter potential bottlenecks or just simply not utilizing your gpu completely and therefore losing performance preferred refresh rate guys you're gonna actually put onto highest available super super important i see way too many people still who have even like 185 
monitors, you know, I see way too many people who have like 180 hertz monitors and they're still playing on 144. Really guys, don't miss out on that, just simply put it on highest available. Shader cache for most games guys in general works on 10 gigs the best guys. This is an overall general setting, really put it on 10 gigabytes, you're gonna be chilling 100%. Texture filtering anti-strophic sampling, you're gonna leave on on. Texture filtering negative LODBS, you're gonna leave on allow. Texture filtering quality, you're gonna put onto high performance again guys, we're trying to go for maximum FPS, so therefore high performance is gonna work the best. And for texture filtering trilinear optimization, you're gonna leave it on on. This is basically how your PC can already pre-render certain textures before you actually join into the game and this can help you with getting more consistent FPS. Threaded optimization, you're gonna leave on automatic, triple buffering on off, vertical sync guys, super important, even if you're playing on something like 60, 75 hertz, where it only really makes sense to put on V-Sync because any monitors above that have free sync or G-Sync compatibility. V-Sync just in general gives you around three milliseconds additional input delay, so it's really not worth it guys, yeah? Only if you have like hard screen tearing, then maybe, but besides that guys, you just get additional input delay, it doesn't make sense. Virtual reality, anything here guys, you're gonna leave on off or the lowest possible and Vulkan OpenGL preset method, you're gonna leave on auto, doesn't really matter for any games. Now guys, for the rest of the settings, what I wanna show you is, please also make sure that you go under adjust desktop size and position and there, please make sure that you put it actually onto full screen, super, super important and your maximum refresh rate of your monitor. For me right now here, it's 360 yards, so therefore I'm gonna put it on the maximum. I see as mentioned, way too many people don't have it on that. And then we're actually gonna move over here now guys, to adjust desktop color settings and this is now where a ton of people always ask me why is the game so colorful so bright guys this is the main reason behind it digital vibrance on 70 percent make sure trust me there guys 70 percent is the best one visually and then we're also going to go here under video and adjust video color settings go under there guys and saturation we're going to put to 75 percent if we have vibration on 70 and saturation on 75 basically any game on your pc is gonna look amazing please compare it right now guys and tell me that there isn't a difference this is exactly how all these valorant fortnite and csgo pros get their games always to look super colorful always see enemies first because you actually have this competitive advantage and with that said we're basically done here if you guys are struggling with hyping in modern warfare 2 or warzone or your favorite game in general or you have super high input delay guys i can only recommend you no ping no ping is an amazing tool which you can utilize and you can see you can basically select for over 1000 supported games the server in your near with the least amount of ping on top of that you can also go in the settings and enable this turbo games mode which will give you less input delay on your keyboard we also have an fps boost feature with some of the best tweaks you can apply possibly to your PC and they're all tested and safe. You can just simply apply them while clicking onto them. No ping will cost you exactly five bucks per month guys, but with my code in the description or better said my link, you can get 20% extra off. I know it says hashtag ad guys in the corner, but I personally use this every time before I actually hop into Warzone or MW2 because it helps me to get less ping and all that stuff guys. They have a bunch of different payment methods guys, but they have also PayPal here by the way. Yeah, you have to click onto this. It's kind of hidden. I don't know why, but you have PayPal as well. You can just simply type it in there and yeah, you can pay as well via PayPal. And as mentioned, they support over 1000 games. So therefore make sure to check it out with the link in the description and actually get yourself lower ping, less input delay and better FPS.